What's up YouTube? I hope each and every one of you guys are healthy and enjoying life today. In today's video, I'm going to be reviewing the 2024 Honda Odyssey EXL. Huge thank you to Eric Robertson over at Safford Brown Honda of Arlington, Virginia for allowing me to do this video for you guys today. If you are interested in this particular Odyssey or any Honda product, then I'll be sure to have Eric's information on screen as well as in the description box down below. But with that said, let's get into the video. All right, well, just like usual, first, I'm gonna talk about the exterior and the performance. So like I said, this is a 2024 Honda Odyssey EXL, and this particular one has been painted in lunar silver metallic. This being the EXL, as standard, you get LED headlights with automatic high beams as well as LED daytime running lights, standard turn signals, and LED fog lights. Taking a step to the left, this is what the front end of the EXL looks like. So you do get a gloss black bar style grille with your Honda logo located at the center. And then above the grille and both headlights, you get some chrome trim. Coming down just a little bit more, you get a satin black lower grille as well as two sensors integrated to the lower grille. One right there, one right there. And last but not least, you get four and a half inches of ground clearance, no matter which Odyssey trim level you get. Here's a front three quarter shot. You get a side marker light here, and then these are the standard and only wheels you can option the EXL with. And they are 18 inch gray with machine face wheels, and these wheels are wrapped in 23560 Bridgestone Taranza EL440 all season tires. I'll give you a view of the tread pattern on those tires there real quick. There you go. And then coming into our side view mirrors, you get body color mirror caps with integrated turn signals. And as standard, these side view mirrors are heated, manual folding, you get memory functions. So you get two memory seat adjustment settings for your driver. So not only is it going to memorize your driver seat settings, it is also going to memorize the outer mirror settings. And then you also have your blind spot monitoring located here and right about there. Now I'm gonna take a step back and give you a side profile shot of this thing. That is what it looks like here on the side. And you may note that you do get satin black window trim at the top of the windows, and then you get that satin chrome window trim at the bottom of the windows. I apologize if there's a little bit of wind noise right now. It seems like we're getting a little bit of a breeze. And then you do get keyless access, but the keyless access function is only on your front two door handles. The rear two door handles do not get the keyless access function. And then come in all the way to the bottom of your passenger doors, you get a satin black rocker panel. And then working my way back, you do get a capless filler neck behind your fuel door. So if you press on the fuel door, it will open up, revealing your capless filler neck. And 87 octane will do you just fine here with the Odyssey. And then closing that back up, here is a rear three quarter shot. And then I wanted to show you at the top of your roof line, you get that satin black shark fin antenna. You also get the satin black roof spoiler with the integrated third brake light. You get a rear window defroster. You get a rear wiper, you get some satin chrome trim and LED combination taillights come standard with this trim level. Here is a little booty shot of the Odyssey and you may notice connecting your two taillights, you get a mix of gloss black and chrome trim, obviously Honda logo at the center. And then offset to the left of the Honda logo, you have your backup camera. And then underneath the Honda logo, if the vehicle is unlocked or you have your key fob in your pocket, you feel a little pad and you press on that pad, your power lift gate will open up by the way this lift gate is height adjustable all you would have to do is like bring it down to the certain height you want it to open up to at all times and then you press and hold on that button right there and it will memorize that height each and every time you open it up now with the third row seats up i would say you probably get about you know three feet of storage space from the opening here to the seat back and it's very deep down in there i'd say you know from about here to down there you get about a foot of depth However, these magic magic seats will stow away and then it's kind of like you almost have like a truck bed in the back of your Odyssey. I'll show you what that looks like on screen right now, a little demonstration of that, which is very cool. And then also if you pull on this, I believe you can push forward on that seat. So then you get a little bit of storage space, but it's not like the flat storage space as if, if you, uh, you know, close that seat off like I just showed you on screen. And then that seat does the same exact thing. You get a storage cubby on the passenger side of your trunk. There's a view of that storage cubby. And then you also get a 12 volt power outlet up top there. And then coming on to the passenger side of the trunk, you get a little storage cubby up top here. You could set your jumper cables, maybe a couple gloves or any little necessities up top here. Maybe you could set some snacks, 
down in there. So very good amount of storage space here in the trunk area with these little storage cubbies. And really that's kind of about it for what we got going on in the trunk area. Down in here, these are your all weather floor mats and your carpeted floor mats. But coming over to here, if I press that button, the power lift gate will close back up and let's finish things off here at the back end. So on the lower left hand side of your lift gate, you get your Chrome Odyssey badging. You get a body color rear bumper with two reflectors and then you get a max tow capacity of 3,500 pounds. So it doesn't matter which Odyssey you get, all trim levels have a 3,500 pound max tow capacity. And that's kind of about it for the exterior of the EXL. I'm going to give you a little walk around of it. You guys can see the sharp little body lines right there and right there. It's coming up very well on camera. And actually, it's funny enough that cloudy days are the best day to film review videos because you don't have to worry about the sun's heat beating down. Then you got to worry about the shadows and stuff like that. But with that stuff out of the way, let's move into performance. Pop and open that hood reveals the three and a half liter naturally aspirated V6 that makes 280 horsepower and 262 pound feet of torque. It is mated to a 10 speed automatic transmission for a zero to 60 time in six and a half seconds. And if you were wondering about fuel economy, you can achieve 19 miles per gallon in the city, 28 miles per gallon on the highway for 22 miles per gallon combined with front wheel drive only. I did want to mention that with the Odyssey, you can only get it in front wheel drive. So if you want it all wheel drive, I'd suggest you take a look at the Toyota Sienna. But if you're enjoying the video so far today, please be sure to give this video a big thumbs up please hit that subscribe button. I'm on my journey to 100,000 subscribers and I cannot reach my goal without your support. So if you're enjoying the video, if you've learned anything from the video thus far, please take a second to like, comment, and subscribe. I would greatly appreciate it as it helps me get closer to my dreams. But with that stuff out of the way, let's move into the interior. Moving on into the interior, as before mentioned, you do get keyless access. So all you have to do is have your key fob in your pocket, walk up to the vehicle, put your hand behind the door handle and it will unlock. You can also lock it by pressing on this button right here and it will lock right back up. This is what the key fob looks like. It is mostly satin black and then going over the functions on the key fob, you have your unlock and your lock functions, your power second row door functions. That is your remote start function, your power lift gate function and your panic function. And in order to remote start the vehicle, you have to lock it. Then you press and hold on this button right here and she'll fire right up. And that is what it sounds like when fired up from the exterior's perspective. But now let's see what the interior of this particular EXL has to offer. So this one's been specced with the Mocha leather upholstery. There also is the option of gray leather. This one's just been specced with the Mocha. And I kind of like the way the Mocha looks on the lunar silver metallic exterior paint. But we're going to start here on our door panel. So at the top of the door panel, you get some vinyl wrapping. You get a satin black door handle two memory seat adjustment settings, power side view mirror controls, your unlock and your lock functions. Then this button right here is going to restrict your passenger window privileges. You get automatic up and down windows at all four corners, a leather wrapped and padded armrest, and then storage space, a spot you could set a water bottle, some more storage space, and another spot you could set a water bottle. And last but not least, you get a speaker at the bottom. One thing that is really nice about the EXL is you get a 12-way power driver seat with four-way power lumbar as well as an eight-way power passenger seat with four-way power lumbar. But let's step into the captain's chair, I like to call it. Close the door, take a listen to what that sounds like. And now press the button and we're going to gain full access into all of this stuff here. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to walk you throughout the entire interior starting with these functions over here. So you can see the open and the close button. So if I press and hold on this um, with the vehicle unlocked, that is going to open up that power rear door on this side. And obviously, if you press and hold on that, it's gonna close right back up. And then same thing for the passenger side, you just press and hold on that and it will open and or close. You can also turn those power second row doors off by flipping that down on that. So now if I press and hold on it, nothing is going to happen. Obviously, you'd leave it on. I don't know why you would turn it off. But anyways, then you have your power lift gate function to open and or close it. This button right here is going to pop up your driver safety stuff on your seven inch instrument cluster. So you can see you got your road departure mitigation stuff, blind 
blind spot information and your collision mitigation braking system. So when you click on that button, that is what pops up on that screen. Then this is to turn your traction control system on or off. You get an electronic parking brake. And if you wanted to engage the parking brake, you'd push against that and the parking brake will engage. I'll let you know right there. If you wanted to disengage the parking brake, you'd have to push your foot down on the brake, pull up on that, and then the parking brake will disengage. And then beneath that, you have your brake hold button. Uh, so basically that button is when you're stuck in traffic and you're tired of holding your foot down on the brake yourself. Basically, when you press that button, the vehicle will hold you in place by itself with its braking system. It's a very convenient feature when you're stuck in traffic or stuck in a drive-through or something like that. But now let's take a listen to the turn signal. That is what the turn signal sounds like on the Odyssey. And then not only is this your turn signal control stock, this is also your headlight control stock. So right now that is headlights off, parking lights on, headlights automatic, and then all the way up is your headlights always on. I personally like to leave it in automatic. And then that is to turn your fog lights on or off. I did want to mention that you do get a manual tilting and telescoping steering wheel. So if you flip down on this, then you can bring the steering wheel towards you. You can push it away from you and you can also move it up and down until you find your comfortable position. Then obviously you just lock it right back into position once you found your comfortable uh, you know, position for the steering wheel. By the way, you do get a leather wrapped steering wheel with your steering wheel mounted paddle shifter. So your upshift on the right, downshift on the left. And just like any other vehicle, you have your horn at the center. So let's take a listen. That is what the horn sounds like on the Odyssey. And then going over the controls on the left-hand side of the steering wheel, these controls kind of, um, you know, are to go forwards and backwards on a track, but then you have these up, the down arrow, the uh, enter button, the back button, and the home button, and all of those buttons are to control your seven inch instrument cluster. I'll get into those controls here in a second, but anyways, going back to these functions, that's to go backwards on a track, that's to go forwards on a track, volume up, volume down, that is going to pick up on a phone call, that is going to hang up on a phone call, and then that is to speak to the vehicle. And then coming to this side of the steering wheel, as standard with the EXL, which is very nice, you get adaptive cruise control. So here are your adaptive cruise control settings. And then obviously you have your windshield wiper control stock here. And then moving into our gauge cluster, you get a seven inch instrument panel or instrument cluster, I would say. Um, so basically at the top of the instrument cluster, you have your tachometer, your digital speedometer readout, your transmission status stuff, all of this stuff down here is configurable, which I'll get into here in a second. This is letting me know that my driver assistance aids are on at the moment. And then down here, my, I have my odometer, ambient exterior temperature, the coolant temperature gauge is on the left, and then on the right, you have your fuel gauge. And then you also have this little dial right here. Um, and basically, if you twist it to the left, that is going to dim the gauge cluster. If you twist it to the right, that is going to brighten the gauge cluster. And again, to control that center screen, you have the back arrow, the home button and then these ups, down arrow and the enter button. So to control that screen right now, I'm just gonna click the home button. This is the home screen. So you can either show or hide your apps. You can kind of select which ones you wanna show or hide. Um, and then if I just click back, it's gonna bring me into this. Then you can go into your trip computer stuff like your trip A or your trip B information. Going down one more, it's gonna pop up your phone stuff. So you can go into your recent calls or favorite contacts. Then you also have uh, what music is playing at the moment. Come down one more, you got your maintenance stuff. And all I'm doing is clicking down on this and pressing the enter button. So if you go into your maintenance stuff, you can pop up your tire pressures. You can also pop up your oil life. And then click in that back button right there, back button. It's gonna bring you back into this screen. You get your safety support stuff. So not only can you go into the safety support stuff through navigating throughout this screen, you can also click that button right there, which would be easier to get into this screen. But anyways, you can turn on or off your road departure mitigation stuff stuff, your blind spot information stuff, and or your collision mitigation braking system. And that's all you got. And then going back one more, you get your different settings. You can arrange the apps how you want them to be. Uh, you can also show the tachometer or you can not show the tachometer. And then back one more, you can go into your units, kilometers an hour uh, or miles an hour. And then if you go into the blank screen, basically it displays nothing down here. But um, I don't know. I don't know which screen I would leave it in. I'd probably leave it in this because why not, right? And that's kind of about it for the gauge cluster. Not too much going on, which is very nice. Ease of use, you know what I'm saying? And then moving into the infotainment system. So this is an eight inch infotainment system with wired Apple CarPlay and wired Android Auto connectivity. And on the left-hand side of the screen, you have your shortcut buttons into your home screen, your back button. And if you click this, this is gonna put you into your day mode. 
that is going to put you into your night mode and then that is going to turn the screen off if you press it one more time it brings you back into your day mode um, so basically this is what the screen looks like up top here you have your shortcuts to go into phone fm bluetooth audio that's letting you know what music is playing then that is the battery of my phone the signal of my phone and the current time so these are your dials on your home screen on this system. So you can read all of those. You can swipe over here. You have these second ones and then swiping all the way over. You have your Honda link. So that is the infotainment system. You can also go into your trip computer and pop up your fuel range, average fuel economy and that kind of stuff. But I'm going to go into the back button, brings me back into this screen uh, and really not too much going on here. I can click the all apps button for you. You can either select what you want to see on the uh, screens or you can deselect them. So you can see all of those different things there. And that's kind of about it for this screen. This screen, not too much going on throughout it, so I don't feel like I need to spend too much time on it because it is very easy to use. But then over here, you have your volume control knob. So if you just press on that, that is going to mute the audio system. Uh, and then volume control knob, you know how to use the knob, right? And then this is your climate control system. So you do get a physical climate control system. You can control the front climate by pressing on that. It's gonna pop up your climate control stuff up top there. But if I turned it on, you can see the temperatures, the fan speed and then the rear temperature you can see all of those controls there but if you wanted to control the rear climate from the front seats you would click this button right here and it's going to pop up your rear climate you can adjust all of these different things that you see on that screen by clicking on that button there i also believe you can lock the rear climate so then they're not going to have access into the controls back there if you have the rear climate locked so definitely nice if you got kids that like to tamper with your stuff and they coming down just a little bit more. By the way, obviously this is a tri-zone climate control vehicle. Coming down a little bit more, you get your push button, start button. As standard with the EXL, you get heated front seats with three levels of adjustability. One, two, three. And then um, push button transmission. If you wanted to go into reverse, obviously push your foot on the brake, pull down to go into reverse, pops up your backup camera push to go into neutral, push to go into drive. And if you wanted to go into sport mode, you'd click that one more time. And now we are in sport mode, but I'm gonna leave it in park at the moment. Over here, this is to turn your auto stop start system on or off. This is gonna put you into your snow mode. This is gonna put you into your economy mode. And then you also have your hazard button over here. This is gonna let you know if your passenger airbags are on or off. If you reach under here, you put your hand and then you pull back. You get a little slide out here. You could set, you know, coins, your phone, stuff like that, but just smaller items. And then you just close that right back up. And you get a USB-A port. You get a 12 volt power outlet and quite a bit of storage space down in here. You could set what you need to, maybe like a purse, a baby bag, stuff like that. And then up top here, you get two cup holders, a little bit of storage space. You can set your phone if you wanted to. And then you can bring this back and it's going to reveal a ton of storage space down in there. I would say you probably get from the opening down about 14 inches uh, of depth down in there. And then also you get a USB-A port and an auxiliary jack, which is right there. I'm not sure how well the camera's going to pick it up. And then you also get a little ledge down in there. You could set a little like key fob or something of that size. And then obviously two cup holders for the rear passengers. You get a lockable lower glove box with quite a bit of storage space in the glove box. So if you want to set things other than your owner's manual, you can do that. So you can fit your napkins, your straws, your snacks, etc. You know, the essentials when you have a minivan. And then as standard with the EXL, you get an auto dimming rear view mirror with Homelink. Homelink is your universal garage door opener. So you can open up three different garage bays with these three different buttons here. And then driver gets a reading light, passenger gets a reading light, they are halogen. And as standard also with this trim level, you get a power sunroof that does tilt and slide. And this is what the sunroof looks like. And these are your sunroof controls. So if you pull back on the sunroof or on that control, the sunroof will slide. If you wanted the sunroof to tilt, what you would have to do is you'd push and then you can see the sunroof will tilt. And then you just close that back up and we'll move into this. Actually, before I move into that, I'm kind of skipping over. So this is your light controls. So this is your instant dome light on button. If you push forward, it turns on all the interior dome lights. And if you have it set to the center function, that is when you open up the doors, the interior lights will turn on. If you pull it all the way back, when you open up the doors, the interior lights will not turn on. And then taking a look at our visor, we get a vanity mirror with two vanity lights. 
And then let's see, does this slide forwards and backwards? I bet you it does. Let's see. Okay, no, it is fixed in position, so it does not slide forwards and backwards. That is interesting to see. I'm actually surprised that the visor does not slide, but it is a big visor, so it really covers anything, any everything anyway. But then you get an Opu panel here for the driver. You get an Opu panel there for the front passenger. And before I get into those second row seats, I want to go over a couple of things. So a couple of things I figured you might want to know. This has heated front seats, a tri-zone climate control system, a sunroof, a seven speaker audio system. Uh, and now I'm gonna throw the entire window sticker on screen and you can take a look at everything that you get as standard. There are no options on this vehicle. Um, so I'm just gonna highlight the MSRP. So the MSRP of the way that this particular 2024 Odyssey EXL is spec'd is $42,705, but I do wanna show you what we got going on in the rear seats before moving into the driving portion of the video because this is an Odyssey after all. So as mentioned, obviously you get the power second row doors. So all you gotta do is pull back and it's like somebody opens up the door for you. Now going over a couple of these seat controls, if you pull up on this, that basically gives you access to pull these seats out so you can take these second row seats out so nothing will be here. Um, so that is what this function does. And if you pull on this lever right here, if that middle seat wasn't there, you could pull up on this lever and you can slide this seat this way or this way. This is your uh, seat recline function. So you can either bring it down like that, or obviously you can also recline the seat backwards with that button or uh, that lever right there. And then if you pull on this lever forward, that gives you access into your third row seats. But before I get into that kind of stuff, I wanna show you what we got going on here in the second row. So if you press right there, the second row door will close. You can also push forward or pull back on that to open or close the second row doors. And then again, you get the second row sunshades that you can pull up manually. Automatic up and down windows back here. Let's see how far these rear windows go down. So not all the way down, but nearly all the way down. Then you get quite a bit of storage space in the door panel down in there. You get a cup holder as well, um, and maybe a spot you can set a phone there. Opu panel on the B pillar. You also get an Opu panel on the roof as well as a spot you could set your dry cleaning and a light up top there. I have the light set to off right now, hence why that is not turning on. Uh, obviously, I think I pointed this out, but you get an HVAC vent, a seat back pocket behind the driver's seat, a seat back pocket behind the passenger seat. You get the same stuff on that side. However, on the passenger side, you have your climate controls. And then you also get two cup holders down here as well as two USB-A ports. You can, if you wanted to, remove this second uh, seat, or yeah, the middle seat, I would say. Um, but anyways, you get these captain's chairs, get the um, armrest. But one thing about these armrests that I don't necessarily like is that they don't like lock into position. So you can move them up and down. Whereas for the driver, you can lock these into position. So I can lock it all the way down. I can move it up, it locks into position. I can move it up a little bit more, it locks into position. So very nice how these front ones do that. Uh, or I guess only the driver one does it. So the passenger one does not lock into place. So the only one that really like locks into place like that is the driver armrest. So I think that's kind of an oversight, but uh, anyways, I've got plenty of knee and leg room as you may be able to tell and when it comes to headroom I've got plenty of headroom and I am five foot nine and I am adjusted behind myself here in the front seat You can also pull this down and you pull up on this You're going to basically get access to a couple more cup holders and storage space So you get three cup holders a little bit of storage space and a nicely padded armrest with leather wrapped right here, but now moving on into the third row because this is a minivan after all Again, pull forward on that, gives me access to the third row. And we'll see what we got going on here in the third row. So here's a little view of what these third row seats look like. And I'm gonna pull this seat back. And you can see me being five foot nine, still adjusted behind myself. I've got actually plenty of knee and leg room. Here's another view of that knee and leg room. And on the driver's side of the third row, you get a 12 volt power outlet, an HVAC vent and two cup holders. Whereas on this side, you get two cup holders, but you do not get a 12 volt power outlet. And when it comes to headroom, I've got quite a bit of headroom. And then last but not least, you 
both people get lights back here. But seat back pocket behind the seat, seat back pocket behind that seat. And really, that's kind of about it for what we got going on here in the Odyssey. So, you know, we've talked about the exterior, we talked about the performance, and now we've talked about what's going on here in the interior. So, I want to see what this thing's like to drive, as I'm assuming you guys do as well. So, I'll see you guys in the driver's seat. All right, now on to the driving portion of the video where this thing is one of the nicest riding vehicles and you could do a very long road trip no matter if you're the driver, the front passenger, or the rear passengers, you're gonna be very comfortable on a long road trip in this thing. So that is one thing about the Odyssey. My uncle actually has one of these, but it's a 2019, but they're very similar. Um, you know, really the only changes are like the exterior looks between the two so i've done actually a road trip with him in that car a few times and that car is very very comfortable again no matter which seat you're in i've actually never you know done a road trip when i was sitting all the way in the third row but i've done one either in the front passenger seat or the second row seat so you know very very comfortable so if you have a bigger family this is very nice because you know your alternative obviously is like a toyota sienna kia carnival or another minivan um but the other alternative is like a chevy tahoe chevy suburban yukon excel uh escalade etc one of those big vehicles and you know when it comes to driving a yukon driving a tahoe versus driving an odyssey the odyssey is much easier to drive and it's going to get better fuel economy than both of those and really you know it's not like that much smaller i mean again if you're going to be towing a boat you're going to be towing a car with your family well then you're going to want to get something like a tahoe an escalade a navigator etc because those are going to be much more capable when it comes to towing stuff and hauling stuff but when it comes to if you're just hauling passengers around, the Odyssey is a great choice because it's easy to park. You can drive it through the city and you're not going to have to worry about, you know, is my thing, my truck too big or my vehicle too big to be able to pull into a parking spot in the city? Well, it might be with like a Tahoe or a Yukon. But when it comes to the Odyssey, the Odyssey is not really going to be too big to fit into a parking garage, too big to fit into parking spaces. And it's just very easy to drive also because the steering is light. This thing does handle better than one of those bigger SUVs. And, you know, I'd like to compare this to a Toyota Sienna, but the other, uh, the only other Toyota Sienna that I've driven is like a 20 or 2014 or something like that. So quite old compared to this, but We'll do a nice little acceleration here for you. I love the way that this motor sounds. It sounds so good. And one of the first times I went for a ride in, with my uncle in his Odyssey when he first got it, we were going under uh, an underpass and he gunned it and it was it actually sounded pretty good and you could hear like the reverberations off of the underpass and it had a nice sound to it you know that deep induction note that the honda v6s have so this thing also has great low-end power um but you really if you want that power you gotta wind it out with that vtex v6 but power wise it's great fuel economy wise it is very good up to 28 miles per gallon in or on the highway about 19 miles per gallon i believe it was in the city so you know pretty efficient considering it is uh, what it is you know maybe not the most efficient but one thing that i do like about this is that it's got the naturally aspirated v6 and these honda v6s are solid as a rock you know what i mean i've got uh honda v6 in my 2007 ridgeline and it's got 200 and uh how many miles 234,000 miles on it and it's still kicking but yeah it might not be as fast as it was or spry as it was when it was you know young quote unquote new but it still goes so if you want something that's reliable you can't really beat a honda or a toyota here's another little acceleration you can feel this thing build power and that's something that i do like about naturally aspirated engines is that you can feel them build power when you get them higher up into the rpms not that all of you care about that kind of stuff but seat comfort wise very comfortable in the driver's seat i do really like this adjustable uh, armrest here that the driver gets although i do wish at least the front passenger also got the adjustable armrest they have an armrest right here but you don't get to lock it into position like you can with the driver's seat but with the driver's seat being able to lock this into position it gives you a very comfortable 
you know, driving seating position, uh, being able to like rest your arm there and have your right hand or right arm on the steering wheel or right hand on the steering wheel just gives you that nice control and just a comfortable position when driving the vehicle for long periods of time or even just around town. So infotainment system is very easy to use. The sound system in this is actually like pretty decent considering it's just the standard sound system. It's got some nice bass to it. It's got good clarity. I didn't really push the sound system, but I did, you know, listen to a couple songs on it and I thought it sounded pretty good. So sound system wise, it's great. And you know, if you're looking for a family vehicle, I highly suggest you go out and take one of these things for a spin, go out and take a Sienna for a spin and really, you know, iron out which one is right for you because, you know, I could suggest Suggest this over a Sienna for you but then you go and test drive the Sienna and the Sienna has all-wheel drive whereas the Odyssey does not have all-wheel drive which makes you want the Sienna which I understand so really it comes down to personal preference I do wish the Odyssey had all-wheel drive as an option but it doesn't but overall it is a very great family vehicle but that's it for today's video if you guys did enjoy the video please be sure to give this video a big thumbs up please hit that subscribe button. I'm on my journey to 100,000 subscribers and I cannot reach my goal without your support. So if you enjoyed the video, if you learned anything from the video, please just take a second to like, comment, and subscribe. Those three things look very good for my channel in the YouTube algorithm and that is what helps me grow. But again, that is it for today's video. I'll catch you all in the next one. Peace.